For some reason, it doesn't make a difference anymore. I just don't care. I know that's a terrible thing to say, isn't it? But if I sit in the bathroom, I don't care because he's always been the truth. He's always the problem. And I believe in my heart that I haven't given my Savior the kind of praise that's expected out of me for the things he's done in my life. Thank you, Jesus. I don't know. Happy New Year's to you. Amen. As though the day was calling, I was laughing on the inside because I could almost hear in my spirit the child might change. No, it's not. This is broken. <laughs> we don't like change. But imagine this how swift Jesus would have came. Imagine if he would have made his mind to come at 7.30. Oh my God. And of course you murmur and complain about what? No, I, oh, I, oh, no, I can't not, oh, what? Oh, my God, God. Well, you stay here. Oh, my God. <laughs> just stay here. No, no, just stay right here. Stay where you want to be. <laughs> just stay where you want to be. Jesus, amen, is magnificent. I said Jesus. I didn't say y'all were. I said Jesus is magnificent. Amen. He's given the kind of uses for a pecking order. A pecking order, amen, is an order of who's the boss. It's, that word is used among the animal kingdom. Amen, whoever's the alpha or the matriarch. In the hyena, in the hyena world, it's the female, they're the boss. Over in the lion, amen, it's the big main brother. I don't care what y'all say, feed me. But well, Jesus is the master. Yes. He is the great I am tonight. Did you hear what I said? I said he is the great. You know what I said tonight? I'll tell you what I said tonight. Because he might not be your great I am tomorrow. But he's the great I am tonight. He's the great I am this very moment. This very hour. He's the great I am. And in my humble joy, to worship him in truth and in the spirit of the living God. See, sometimes we think we're going to be worshiping God's going to change tomorrow. But forgive me if I say this, and I know this sounds terrible because I'm the teacher, you know, but if God doesn't change one thing, my name is still written. And that's the only thing that's important. Because man was born to die. But between life and death, he was also born to give God the glory. He was born to worship the Lord in truth. He was born to lift his voice, his hands, to apply his strength unto the King eternal. He was born to be born again. Hallelujah. He was born to be born again. And then in being born again, he was formed and fashioned in the furnaces of affliction yes. through the tribulations yes. and the trials, proving that he would hold on to the matchless hand of Almighty God. Yes. That he would not run back to the world where he used to live, yes. hanging in the beggarly elements that was his weakness, but stand upon the rock of his salvation, holding forth the blood-stained banner of him that brought us out of but. Still crazy. Right. And I'll be crazy That's when right. all of us are gone. Right. It's taking some things for God to put us back on track. That's right. I didn't say I put myself there because I told God I didn't want to. Right. All right. All right. Because you get comfortable in the condition you are. Right. I said you get comfortable. Yeah. Yeah. We get comfortable being what we are. Mm. Because we are creatures of adaptability. Yeah. We can adapt to our circumstances very comfortably. Mm -hmm. We may not like it, but we can adapt to it. Yes. Well, I'm born again, so I don't have to adapt All right. to any new condition. That's 
For this is the condition of the Lord. Yes. This is what we are now. This is what we're going to be when we get to glory. Hallelujah. I'm just in practice for what I'm going to do before the throne. You know what I'm saying? I'm in practice now. I'm trying to hold my tongue just for a minute. I am in practice right this minute for what I'm going to be doing in the kingdom of glory. My mind is already formulated in the word of God. My heart is fixed for the purposes of the spirit. I don't know why y'all here tonight. I would like to hope you're here because you came with a made up mind that you're going to take all of 2012 and beyond and hurl it in the sea of forgetfulness. Yes, yes. Thank you, Jesus. Woo! Hi! Well, you asked the I did not ask the hard thing. I asked you to do what Jesus did for you. I asked you to do what the Father did for you. I'm not asking for a fresh start. You got too many fresh starts. I keep saying I'm asking for a new way. Yes. I'm gonna be in Matthew the twelve chapters for a little while, and I'm not gonna hold you long. You know, and you must forgive me if I change the time in mid-flight. But I, I'm considering all the saints at all times. Some of y'all gotta get up and go to work tomorrow. It's true. And some of you, well, I don't have to work, but that's you. You can sit here. When we go on, you stay here about the praise. Huh? But there are people, amen. I was, we was, we was coming here and people are dressed up out there in costumes looking wild. They're dressed up looking like they're going to have a great time. Some of them got mini shorts on. With no stockings, mini skirts and booty shoulders and all that kind of stuff. They like cats and dogs and all kind of stuff out here. They go somewhere to party. But come tomorrow morning, somebody's going to be possessed. Yes. They're going to be pregnant. A few of them are going to be pregnant. They don't even know it yet. Right. There were a few of them who have like, incorporated diseases they didn't have tonight. There will be others' minds who are going to lose their mind to drugs and commit suicide somewhere. Yes. Because this is, the, this is the spirit of revelry out there tonight. Yes, it is. It is the spirit of destruction. Yes, it, is. it is the spirit of murder. Ah, oh, It is the spirit, amen, of rejection, rebellion, stubbornness. They think they're having fun. And so the price is exacted from them. I am in the house of God. I may not like all of y'all, but I'm in the house of God. saved under the Holy Ghost. Man didn't save me, the Spirit of God delivered me. Ah, I didn't get another man's spirit, I got the Holy Ghost from Christ Jesus. 
I didn't, I didn't get trained by the theological wonders of our society. I got trained by the Holy Ghost through the word of Almighty God with prayer and supplication. Yes, I did. That's why one big one side I say we talking about all prosperity. I'm talking about trying to get your heart right. About the right kind of heart, you ain't going nowhere. I can preach prosperity if you want to, and you can go out and get it because words are power. You got to look with me. I got that, and still be lost tonight. You'll still be lost. I'm trying to keep from being lost. I ain't going to chase you so far in the first place. Because the further I chase you, the further away I get from the source. I ain't going this way. Good to see the kids in the house. Yes. Amen. 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 See, baby boy looking pretty good over there. Yeah. Holy yeah. Ghost oh, bestowed the show. <laughs> Let's see what Jesus said about us in our the recognition of speech. The recognition of speech. Speech reveals character. I want you to hear me clearly. See, when, while we're sitting around wanting people to change, and because, you know, one reason why we're, because God is changing us and we try to talk different and they're not. We get upset because they're not talking different. But God didn't tell me, because I'm revealing to you what that person is. Yeah. Not so you can act like them, but can you, so you can avoid becoming like they are. Right. Speech reveals character. I want you to take this straight into the new year and be honest with you. Speech reveals character. What you say is what you are. Yes. Yes. When you say it sweetly, harshly, coldly, angrily, what you said is what you are. Mm -hmm. And Jesus told him, told him you're, you are a generation of vipers. I'm in the 12 chapters. So you're in the you are a generation of vipers. I'm not saying you're a generation of vipers. God bless you. But you might want to check your tongue and see if it's split. Yes. <laughs> Oh, generation of vipers, verse 34. How long can ye being evil speak good things? For out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh. Did you hear what I just said? Hear the word of God said. How long can you be an evil speak good things? For out of the abundance of the heart, what? The mouth speaketh. The mouth speaketh. I want you to recognize something very, very important. When you're changed, your speech changes. Yes. You can fall in sin, but when you get right, your speech changes. That's right. When God has gotten hold of you once again, you don't talk the way you was talking. You talk the way God taught you how to talk. Yes. Your speech will betray you in the midst of sinners. Mm -hmm. They'll realize there's something different. How did you think they knew something was different about you in the beginning? They wonder if you ran the house. You didn't cuss every third word all of a sudden. Your words were not a man rambling words of a salesman or a hustler. That's right. Amen. You begin to speak with clarity, confidence. Yes. Um, and it's all they heard a hallelujah coming out your mouth. Well, thank you, Jesus. Yes. They asked you, what happened to you, man? That gave you the only, well, I'll tell you, I've met a man. Mm -hmm. They was Jesus Christ. He delivered me from darkness. He set me free from the clutches of damnation. It's amazing that we are here tonight and all of us in one aspect have been set free from the clutches of darkness, but we have not let go of clutching darkness. Because your speech still betrayed a thing. It's like when you're talking to me, so when you're talking to me, like you say one thing when you act some other way towards somebody else. Which makes me realize that you're a craftsman. You gotta hear what you say? I didn't just give you a compliment. <laughs> you're crafty. Sledge. Sly. Cunning. Your voice is not clear, precise, truthful. In love, it speaks what God didn't say. It proclaims what God didn't do. Your speech is betraying me. I want to go to church, 
but I don't want to be with the Lord. I can want to be in the house of the, of the Lord tonight, but I don't have anything to do with the Lord tonight. That was so strange. I'm here, but I just, whatever the Lord's going to do, just do it, because I'm really just here. I just want to, this is the place I'm used to being, so here I am. The question that God would probably ask you if you were standing is why? Why are you here? Are you here to give me or come to get something from me? Are you here to worship me for how I preserved you even when you were wrong? How I kept you when you decided to go against my word? How I preserved you when you walked around with iniquity in your heart? Are you here to give me thanks for supplying your need? Are you here to lift up the name of him that found you wallowing in the cesspool of human degradation and brought you out of the slime pits of hell? Washed you with his precious word and sprinkled the blood of change in your life. Only for you to go back to the puke buckets of violence every so often just to remember from which you come. <coughs> Why are you here? Am I here to worship the goodness of Jesus? The majesty of my Father. Am I here to offer up the sacrifice of the praise? Have I come here tonight because I want to blend my voice of heaven to worship the only wise God, my Savior? Or am I just here because this is my habit? This is what I'm used to doing. Because if I don't come, I feel funny. If I don't go to church, something's not feeling comfortable inside of me. But I often ask when I hear that kind of statement, but when you're here, you ain't doing nothing. Don't you feel uncomfortable now? Thank you, Jesus. You feel funny when you're not here, and you feel funny when you're here not doing nothing. But we said we want to come into it. I was glad when they said it to me, let us. I was glad. We're not glad anymore. Uh, we ain't glad because I don't like you. I'm not glad that I got issues with you. I don't care about your issues with me, I just got issues with you. And yet, we're talking about, Lord, I want you to come. No, you don't. Not yet. You're not ready yet. The reason why Jesus had to come is because the latter rain ain't got right yet. We still got too many things harboring. And your speech is killing you. Thank you, Lord. I love the Lord, don't you? Yes, I do. A good man out of a good treasure of his heart bringeth forth good things. And an evil man out of the evil treasures bringeth forth evil things. Two totally opposite arenas, but both of them bringing something to the table. Both of them bringing something. One bringing life, one bringing death. One brings encouragement, the other one brings discouragement. One brings hope, the other takes hope. One brings lifting, and the other one brings tearing down. And it's all done through opening up one's mouth. Well, come to church, and, and this is everywhere, not CT. Take the word CT out and call it the body of Christ. And you'll find this in every sanctuary in the world. That there's wheat and there's tear sitting in the same sanctuary. Right. Mm -hmm. yes, and somebody asked, well, God, can't we separate? He says, no, let them grow together. Yes, yes. That's what the word said. Uh -huh. You don't like them there because all they do is bring discord, yes. discomfort, yes. division, yes. strife, yes. confusion. No matter where they are, that's their character because they are a tear. But if you notice the tear and the wheat grow together, somehow they're in a lock with each other. And God said, no, leave them alone. Don't, don't bother them. 
Let them continue the way they're going. But in the day of the harvest, when the reapers shall come, uh, he shall separate the wheat from the tail, the liar from the truth. So I don't mind being called a liar until God calls me a liar. <laughs> because if he called me a liar, his judgment is true. The problem here is that we're, we're trying to pull ourselves apart and the tear is attached to you and you are attached to the tear. The tear influences you more than you influence the tear. They pollute you with their own complications. But the Bible says, let them grow. Let them grow together. Well, I can't because I can't praise God because that tear is sitting over there. That same tear is keeping you down. You're upset about the tear, but the tear got your mouth shut. The tear has taken the joy out of you. The tear has removed the strength of your salvation. The tear has removed from you the gladness that the oil of the Holy Ghost has provided. You can't get your stuff together because the tear won't get out of your sight. They are attached to you. They're not attached to everybody. They're just attached to one of you. There's one tear for each, for each week. <laughs> you have a joyful moment and the tear shows up and your joy goes right out the window. The fire you had, they cooled it off for you. The oil of gladness ran down your face and dried up with them, but a stain there. You had a, a, a real genuine hallelujah coming out of you, and it got caught somewhere between your chest and your throat. It never came out your mouth. And somebody said, Well, what's going to do about this? He said, Leave them alone. Don't bother them, let them grow together. And I often ask God, why? It's a reason why. It, it, it's so simple, it hurts. The reason why, so you'll know which one you want to be when you get saved. You will, if you are wheat, you gravitate to the wheat. If you are tear, you gravitate to the tear. You gravitate, amen, to the backbiter if you're still a backbiter. You know what I said? You gravitate to the jubilance if the jubilance is inside of your soul. You gravitate to the praises when praise has been put inside of you by the Spirit of God. Or you gravitate to the murmurer because murmur is still what you're all about. You gravitate to what you are. No matter where you go, that's what you gravitate to. Until you permit God to do what God started to do and redo in you what he put so you can gravitate to the place that you used to gravitate at. And stop trying to be a tear when you're not. Stop trying to intermingle with the tear. Stop trying to change the tear. You can't change the tear. The tear was sold by the evil one. He was sown in the dark of night, in the time of tribulations, in the time of heavy trials, when you're feeling your worst and your lowest time. He sowed the dark seed inside and it began to grow and began to hinder you, silence you, quiet you down, make you withdraw. Isolate you. So you could not be part of the full river, but you are part of a dripping drop that sometimes splashes off the rock. And pretty soon you can't even find the place where you want to praise God anymore. You've exceeded the tear that you were attached to. You're worse than they are. And all came to words. It was words. They were statements, ideologies, 
quote unquote, a sharing of spiritual information. It was your idea about what the Bible meant versus the idea of the truth. It was how you viewed it versus how God said it. It was how you felt about it versus how God commanded it. And you found that individual or individual that they may could agree with how you see it. And it gave you validity. Now you found the scripture if there's two or three that agree. But you're all agreeing wrong. And before long, you got the outline of a wheat, but she's bitter like a tear. Your speech speaks the things of tear. I like that word tear. I know how it's spelled, but it might be the other word. To tear asunder. To rip apart. To destroy. And yet Jesus said clearly, the devil coming. He arrives. He comes to the scene. He's like a vulture. He smells your dead breath already. And he sends his vultures to wait for you to die. So he can pick your eyes out your skull. He's heard your words of negativity. He's heard the hostile feelings that has abruptly come out of you in the middle of the night when there was nobody around but you. And he sent his minnows to take full advantage of the condition until he has sucked out of you the very aspirations of the minute hope you used to have and leave you sitting there either at home or in the church as a dead hus hollow inside where you was a vibrant radiated praising worshiper who loved God, that all God had to do was command it, and you were off and running. All he had to do was look in that direction, and you would break camp trying to get where you were going. You would, you had no, amen, withdrawal from God. All you had to know is that's what God wanted, and you was off and running. Yes, yes. All you needed to know is that if it made God happy, yes. good God in time, you were prepared. You didn't care about the order of things. You didn't care about the rule books or the regulations. You didn't want to know what the margin was. For you, you had no margin. You was full of the liberty of the spirit of the living God. You was full of the desires of heaven. You was full of the wonders of his word. You was filled with the bubbling oil of gladness. Your belly churned with the blowing winds of God's glory. Your heart was seated with the zeal of God's purpose. Your mind was formed by the very word of God to obey what thus saith the Lord God of Israel. You didn't look at the preacher. You didn't look at the pulpit. You didn't look at the sanctuary. Your eyes were fixed upon the king. Hallelujah. And I came to give King Jesus the praise, the honor. And if I look wild to you, I'm sorry, but I can't see you. Because this is what he's made. This is what I am. This is where I came from. So the terror came. During a time of trial. Whispering words of discord in your ear. Pointing the fingers of accusations around the sanctuary and other churches. Hard times came and you felt that God left you because the devil said he left you. Thank you Jesus. After all that praying and all that, that teaching and maybe all that preaching, now you want to believe God left you because things are hard and uncomfortable. <laughs> things are kind of destitute and something God has no interest in you because your terror told you so. Your terror said, but well, look at them, they're blessed and they're not, they're not living half as much as me. See, the terror has diverted your eyes from where they used to be. To where he wants you to sit. 
For all you see with the rays of God's glory rising on the dark horizon, you had hope. Now you look down into the slime pits of despair and wonder what's going to happen to me. My God, my God, my God. The praise has become silent. They lost their strength. Your dance has become still. Your hand clap is now mediocre. Now I'm just kind of dragged into the church because that's where I'm excited. I become a church examiner. I come in to see who's getting what because I ain't got nothing to give nobody and I'm not expecting to get nothing from nobody. Wow. 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 Tear did this to you. And out of your mouth comes the words of what has now been birthed in you by the evil one. When you had words that would stir up a sanctuary, now you got a word. Your testimony feels like razor blades in the eyes of people. Where it used to be a testimony that made them want to get saved, want to make them draw nigh to God. You had the joy of your testimony along with your testimony. Now you just have a lecturer's testimony. Hope you get through it for the next 25 minutes. The terror has destroyed you. And yet you hear the word a little leaven, the leaven is the whole lump. You begin to get to a place where even the preacher can't reach you anymore. Because as far as you're concerned, they ain't no good either. You may not say it out loud, but your actions demonstrate it. You know why? Because they're not speaking what you want to hear. They're not going to tell you that you're going to be coming out tomorrow. The way it's going to be named and being by six days or so, it's going to be all right. Because you change the order of prophetical utterance. Your prophetical utterance now is talking about temporal things. I want God to tell you what you're going to do. He did tell you, right here. Yeah. You didn't realize that you stopped seeking him first. Yeah, the kingdom of God yeah, and his righteousness, yeah. which is spiritual, yeah. which is invisible. Yeah. You stop seeking the invisible yeah. and begin to seek the visible. Yeah. You stop seeking that which could not be seen with the naked eye, but could be demonstrated inside the invisible soul, which can be manifested in the body because the soul and the spirit, amen, is in rulership. You no longer, amen, look for the things that heaven has offered. Now you're caught up in the prophetic of what God's going to give you down here. When I'm going to get my blessing? Where's my Abrahamic blessing? You didn't read the Abrahamic story yet, did you? Because none of us said riches. That was there before. He received the grace of God because he believed God. Not because he said you're going to have a son. But because he said, I want you to look at the stars and count them. Because when you, as you look at the stars, that's how many you're going to have. That's the awesomeness of the promise. Isaac is not the awesomeness of the promise. The awesomeness of the promise is that your, your seed is going to fill the world as, as sand is filled the beach and the shores. Your seed, that is an awesome testimony to an individual where he had no kids at all, no offsprings. Isaac was simply part of the promise. Because what was going to come to Isaac would be the bloodline of Jesus. Come on, yes, because of Isaac, yes. Jacob, and those, your bloodline brought him here so you could receive. All through the, 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 the Old Testament and the New Testament, all the way through, amen, Matthew, Mark, and Luke, and John, the bloodline was there until he died. Then you don't see the line any longer until Pentecostal died. When the Holy Ghost dropped upon mortal man and infused himself with humanity, suddenly the bloodline showed up again. Because then they were born again, they were born again of Jesus Christ. We are the blood. Because you're living a 
the world that don't recognize you. Joseph, All right. don't see you, Mary. They didn't realize who they were doing. Mary is a princess. Joseph was a prince. Yes, they were. Because they came from the bloodline of David, one from Solomon and one from David. You carry the blood of royalty in your being. You carry the power of that blood in your being. You carry the authority of the royal blood of Jesus in you. Oh, I'm sorry. Let me get happy about myself. See, it doesn't make a difference whether I eat all that speak. I'm eating right now. The sustaining grace of God. This is really all I need. Because I was never born to live by bread alone. I, I was born to live by the word of Almighty God. I was born to live by jewels and wealth. I am a Jew. And I'm a wealth under God. I'm already tried like gold. Proven like silver. I'm on the royal diet of heaven. Oh my God. I'm in a world that I don't belong to, and so are you. You're walking in strange places, dealing with diverse and strange people. But you're just passing through. You're just making your journey to complete your end. That maybe along the way you'll shine the glorious light of salvation to some. Chapter 3. If I can let him 
get a hold of my tongue. If I can control my tongue, I can bridle the whole man. I can control my emotions, control my actions. I can bring forth what I couldn't bring forth yesterday because the Holy Ghost is in control. He has the charge of my mouth. How do I know that? Because that the tongue can no man tame, but the Holy Ghost can tame it. The Holy Ghost can hold it tight and not put a guard over it and call you to speak those things which come from above.
the new. We ain't got no new capture for you to go into the new year with. We ain't got no words that's gonna say, well, we promise that God is. I'm gonna tell you right now, you're gonna stay exactly where you are until you become obedient to the spirit of the living God. That's right. And it's an individual choice. This is not collective choice. It's an I don't need to give you a praise party. You can only become my praise partner when you walk where I'm walking.
testimony. You can't remove my testimony. My testimony is not to make you happy. My testimony reminds you from whence I've come and who did it. My testimony is not that I got a new car, a new pair of shoes. My testimony I've been sprinkled in the blood of the Lamb and the seal of God's grace is upon my life. And the oil of God's blood is coming down in my face. And the power of God struggles in my belly.
crying out to him? Or are you going to stay stuck in the entrapment that you had formed? Or are you going to let God break you loose and stay loose? Are you going to dry up, amen, as a fig tree and produce no further fruit? Or are you going to flourish into a tree that brings forth fruit in abundance? Is it not your outer condition that's the most important thing here? Is that you're dying on the inside, drying up on the inside. You lost the jubilation that once was yours because of people. She don't want to praise God and heal. Why should I be hindered? Then let me just shout on the top of I'm telling I'm not saying not me, I'm going crazy, I'm going y'all. Why are you amen, being hindered by other people? This is your salvation. God gave it to you. You got to fight for it. The devil wants it. I know I say it quick, but I mean it. If he wants this salvation, he's going to pluck out of my dead, cold hands. You know what I said? Because many times I've learned here recently, I've allowed people to clam me up. Because all you got to do is look straight. My God. Because before I was a pastor, I was a praiser. Yes. Before I was a minister, I was a worshiper. Yes. Before I knew all the ins and outs, amen, of the fivefold ministry, I had the oil of gladness running yes. down my face. Yes. I should be enhanced, yes. not drawn up. Yes. Yes. You see, what, what happened to the church? You happened to the church. Yes. You happened to the church. You didn't start out that way. But you ended up that way. You happened to the church. You, 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 you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. But you know, God is so good. God is real good. God will take somebody and make you jealous. I'm looking for somebody that's coming to get jealous. Thank you, Jesus. I was like, God, God born, give the same kind of spirit you gave me. You can cut up this. Yes, Lord. So you can say, well, that's okay. You cut them now. In a few years, yeah. the devil can be beaten down. See, when the devil can be beaten down. What are you talking about? Beat me down? He can touch my body, take my gifts, get my family apart, but he cannot take what God is placing my spirit. What we gonna do? 
I'm going to praise God. Yes, I am. Yes, I am. Now, that might not be suitable to you, amen, tonight. Because I'm going to praise God. I'm going to praise God. Yes, sir. I'm going to praise God because that's what brings me out. Yes. My strength lies in my praise. Yes. My strength to overcome is in the jubilation of my salvation. For the joy of the Lord is my strength. It doesn't yeah. stop me from loving you, but I have to understand, you in, 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 your, in your rawest form of carnality is a pollutant. Mm. Yes. Mm. At that moment, without you to know it, you become a voice of to pollute or to corrupt the way of thinking. All right. I hear you. They don't even know you're doing it because you don't know you're being used. Mm. All you're doing is being in following through how you're feeling. Pause and listen to what you say. Yes. Yes. And remember what God said. Yes. You, have, you can deliver yourself from the snares of the devil. For the word is nine days. Even in thy mouth. Yes. The word of God is nine days. It's in your hearts. It's in your souls. In spite of how negative you feel, the word of God is 90. Yes, it is. And it may not even sound right at that moment because all the emotional tenets is in a negative situation. But the word of God is 90. I will break the back of the yes. devil yes. if I let the word that is 90 rise from my innermost being. Yes, Hallelujah. I'll tell you what Paul said. I beat my body. I don't fight the air as one that knoweth not what they do. I fight a man and make my flesh come under subjection. You will give God the praise. You will let the Spirit of God enhance you right now. You will turn your brain back into the things of God because your mind will stay in perfect peace whose mind is staying on peace. You will put your hands together. You will take a breath and give God no matter how bad you feel, no matter how I feel, I'm sorry, I'm choosing it, I'm allowing it. Now, it may not sound all joyful when you put it here. It may sound a little dry. It may sound a little raspy. But that's all right because I'm fighting against me. I'm not fighting against you, I'm fighting against me. But I have full intentions on beating you. Why? Because the Bible says that Jesus, I have power over all flesh. Yes. That means that the Holy Ghost can make my flesh come in line. Yes. 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 It must come in line. Yes. Because it's not willing to obey God. Yes. It's not willing to be subject unto God, and neither indeed can be. Yes. But I will beat this thing, this vile flesh, yes. with his vile affections into obedience. Into yes. out of his own mouth must come the praises of God. Must come the glory of the Father. My mouth must speak those words that enhances, lifts, and inspires, that breaks down the barrier that the enemy's trying to set against me, that the gates of hell cannot prevail. Because I'm a battering ram from God with the word of Almighty God that Jesus is still the Christ, the Son of the living God. Oh, sunshine. 
God's going to come beaming over your cloud tomorrow. But guess what? The night my cloud is suspended. And if by chance I got to go through the rainstorm of tomorrow, God gave me an umbrella. I'm going into a new year. Oh, thank you, Jesus. God has taken an entire year to prepare me to go into a new life. 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 It's coming from my help. Yes. My help coming from the Lord. Absolutely. Looking unto Jesus. Yes. The author and finisher. Yes. Yes. He was called the day spring of glory. Yes. I would drink the waters of eternal jubilance. Yes. Hallelujah. I would eat the bread that produces eternal life. I want the oil of the Spirit to burn in my soul that the zeal of God will never lose. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. So I'm going to go back to that. Even by yourself. I'm never alone. That's right. I, I didn't realize that until just the other day. I'm, I'm never alone. I'm never alone. I'm never alone. I feel lonely. But that's here. It took that instant to make me realize, I, I've never been alone. When there's nobody around me, there's more with me than there is with you. When the church at one time before I came here had nothing to do with me, I still wasn't alone. When saints turned their back and left me destitute, I still wasn't alone. When I was by myself crying behind my pillow, I was not by myself. Because his promise was yet manifested. I will never leave you. Lo, I am with you always, even until the end of the world. If I speak the outside in the forest, I'm not by myself. You may look at us with disdain, but God will see joy. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You may say, my God, how the mighty is falling. But like I said, I was mighty, you did. Uh -huh. I said, I'm home. Right. That's the difference. Yes. Because God has already did what he promised to do in my life. I am full Hallelujah. of the spirit of the living God. And I go, and I'm here before you tonight hoping that the words that are being spoken will penetrate your hearts. They will drop the scabs from your weary eyes. They will unclog your ears from the lying statements that come from your adversaries. <coughs> and show you the living reality of walking in Christ. Not according to the way men think you are. Not according to how, quote unquote, the church in the When I say church, I'm talking about the organization now. Yes. Says you ought to be, but how the word of God declares. Paul said that I was, I was naked. He said I was hungry. I was destitute. I was in, in the ocean day and night. Mm -hmm. I've been beaten with rods. I've been stoned. Mm -hmm. My countrymen have tried to kill me. Mm -hmm. and yet I stand with the same joy I had when I met him on the road to Damascus. Mm -hmm. And yet I stand yeah. in the same power that when Ananias put his hands on me, I received the oh, Holy Spirit. Oh. And yet I stand against the wiles of my adversary to finish my course. And when his course came to an end, he told his, his, his son, I have finished my course. I have fought the good fight of faith. He didn't say his life was comfortable and at ease. I held on to what God 
gave me when I bent my knee on the road of Damascus. I never oh, left Jesus. my praise. I never removed my joy. My faith has not diminished in the sovereignty of Almighty God. In spite of my life spending almost two thirds in jail but doing nothing but preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ. In spite of never having a real home of my own and having people who love me suddenly abandon me oh, when things got too difficult. I kept my faith. And my faith is seen through my joy. I'm ready to go meet my end. I'm ready to let them take me. Because I fought it every step of the way. I had a man who was been, who stood me 30 years. And yet I'm still here giving God the praise. I've had vows put against me, but I'm still here. Contracts out on me, but I'm still here. Governments have paid me and came down on me, but I'm still here. I've stood before kings and majesties, but I'm still here. I've read before Nero, amen, the, the emperor of Rome, only to be, amen, condemned to die. But here I stand, Timothy. Be thou encouraged. I'm leaving, but you continue. You continue. That's the kind of testimony that I'm going to have when it's time. I don't want to die whimpering and crying and snot about what I didn't do. I love you. And I do mean I love you. I don't always love what you do. But I do love you. I don't have the ability to save anybody. I have not the ability to restore you. I don't have the skills that it takes to mend the human heart. That's God's business. But if you can hear the word of God by the spirit of God yourself, God can mend you and will. The key is not being mended. The key is staying mended. And you can't stay mended even from the same pig trough that you put your head in the first place. It's time to stand up and go forward. Yes, Bishop. We're looking for Jesus to come. Yes. Do you think he wants us to walk into his kingdom weak need? No. No. Whining and banging no. and snarling and snapping? No. I believe the church has to go out the way it came. Yes, I do. With power. Yes. Earth-shaking power. Yes. Nation-shaking power. Yes. Praising and glorifying God. In a degree that makes men wonder what in the world is going on. We never heard this before. And come running asking, what must I do to get what you have? Don't give it to them and then show them that it doesn't work. Don't tell them that Jesus is able and you stop believing it yourself. Don't tell them, amen, that the Holy Ghost has power and you don't believe in the power of the Holy Ghost yourself. Don't quote a word that you can't stand in your own self yes, yes. and declare it right. Yes. Yes, Amen. Heavenly Father, thank hmm. you, Jesus. I thank you tonight, God, for just this. I feel the alterations of your glory already manifesting itself within our being. And I thank you for it. I thank you for the word that has went out to touch those that are sitting in the midst. Hopefully, even those who are maybe slow getting to it, let it burrow in their heart like a wormwood. And to reach the center of their soul and produces the fruits of gladness. Forgive every sin and iniquity. Wash away every crimson stain. Forgive them for their transgression. Let them start with a new way, a new life. Let them cast those things away from them, God, never to involve themselves with it again. Let them drop it into the pits, never again to retrieve it. As you've taken our sins and cast it from us as far as the east is from the west, so let us cast the offenses and the hurts and the anguishes that we have received from people away from us and embrace the goodness of God that has been shown to us even though we've been evil and wicked ourselves. I thank you, Heavenly Father. 
in the name of Jesus that this night, this hour, and this time, in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 the grace of God. Amen. Amen. And a sweet communion of the Holy Spirit. And a sweet communion of the Holy Spirit. Rest. Rest. Rule. Rule. And abide. And abide. In me. In me. Both now. Both now. And forevermore. And forevermore. Amen. 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 Amen.